That's fine. It's just, you know, when you get hot and you can't unhot. I do. <laughs> it's hot. Self caused. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <clears throat> oh, let's be serious now. You can try. That's not happening. Hey, y'all. It's Allie. Welcome to Little Hill Homestead. So we recently made a huge batch. It's a thousand degrees in case you didn't catch that already because we've been canning. There's a bunch of picante sauce canning over here and it's like humid in 9,000 degrees in here. So, um, but I wanted to show you guys today, we made picante and we peeled our, I was going to say potatoes, peeled the potatoes. We peeled our tomatoes. Boom. And so I wanted to show you guys today how to turn this into tomato powder that you can use to make a tomato bouillon like... We use it in Mexican rice. So I have a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. I've preheated my oven to 200 degrees and you're just gonna put these in a layer on your baking sheet. How fun is that? You can dehydrate this as well. I decided to do it this way because um, not everybody has a dehydrator. I have three. <laughs> I see with thrift stores a lot, by the way. For y'all that have kids, you'll understand this. What are you doing? Peekaboo. Oh Lord. Peekaboo. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Peekaboo. Uh, He's playing peekaboo, peek 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 y'all. It's the end of a very long day. Um, I said today was a processing day and it always ends up being a le much longer day than I anticipate. It's just part of it. So I'm hoping these all fit on one cookie sheet, but I'm just laying these out. So I have my oven going at 200 degrees. These are going to bake for an hour and a half to three hours. You're going to have to kind of eyeball it, move things around to make sure they're dried through. If you have a dehydrator, you wanna do like 135 to 145 degrees and let it go for about 12 hours. Sorry, plenty of soccer with my dog. <laughs> it's the end of the day. This is real life, you guys. We live in this house. This is not a stage. Just kidding. Okay, so some of these are folded and so as they cook, I will try to unfold them so they cook a little bit faster. Cook, dry out. So that is what we are doing. And I'm gonna let it go for an hour and a half and then I'll check it. What you're looking for is basically to make sure they are dry through the whole way, um, that you don't have pockets that are still wet. So I'm gonna continue to pull these out and kind of spread them out a little bit. But see how they're, I mean, they're the shape of a tomato, so they're not gonna go perfectly flat because they're round. But um, well, that makes a lot of sense. Makes perfect sense, right? But um, just spread them out as best you can so you don't have anything double layered. And I'm gonna pop them in the oven for an hour and a half at 200 degrees and then I will check on them. Hold on, my hands got dirty. Um, shocker, I was touching tomato. Um, so I'm gonna pop them in the oven, boom, there you go. And I will come back to show you in an hour and a half where we are, cool? Cool. <laughs> hey y'all, it's, by, good Lord, it has been the longest day ever. Um, processing days for us take it out of you. I'm tired and I'm ready to put you done. But it's check-in time. It's been an hour and 40 minutes because the time I went off 10 minutes ago, but we were cleaning up from dinner. So let's take a look at our tomatoes and see where we are. I haven't even peeked. Usually I peek so I know what I'm getting into. They're getting good. They're getting like dried out. They look pepperoni. That's weird. No. So we have a little more to go. They're getting there though, you guys. I'm going to do another, uh, how long should I do? So the fun thing is when you guys, I left my oven wide open, let me close that. <laughs> when you guys do any kind of drying, these will come off there here and see how they're like floppy feeling here. But when they hit the air, they'll start to cool down and they get crunchy. So some of these feel done, but um, some need a little bit longer. They're still a little moist feeling. Like I can, so I'm gonna flip some of them over if they feel like they're wet still. And can you see that at all? It does look like pepperoni. That's the weirdest thing. So yeah, that was real wet. Okay, so I'm flipping them over to get the moisture on the other side done. I'm gonna set it for probably another hour and then we'll check back in. That one's real wet. Yeah, we'll set it for an hour. That's what I'm going with. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. That's Ooh, my Ray. story. Is that Colin Ray? Colin Ray. Colin Ray. I was calling Baton Rouge, but. JK. No, that's Garth Brooks. That's Garth Brooks. Who's country fans? We kind of like everything. My husband's getting a vintage record set up. Have I ever showed you our record player while we're at this? I'm gonna set it 
setting a timer for one hour. Or one minute, apparently. You can't play that! I don't have the rights. I can get kicked off of YouTube if I play Ooh. music. <laughs> Here we go. We, um, here, I'm gonna walk you in the living room. Let's go for a walk. But we can't give props to rich. Okay, so I'm walking you guys in my living room. Cause you know, you're with me, right? Who's with me? So we got this groovy record player. When my husband's grandma Ooh. passed away, we inherited a lot of her stuff actually. Some, cool, me cry, some cool pieces. You're gonna cry over this? No, it's okay. No, <laughs> so we inherited this cool record player and quite a few records um isn't that cool so we try to play records a lot but look at this we got this cool little table oh you can't see it it's a milk glass oh. table so this is we have like a little memorial table this oh you is, gotta see my where'd grandma. you think you were going with us tonight just tomatoes right well let me show you you gotta see my grandma she's this beautiful picture. okay so am i even pointing at her yes so this is my husband's grandma, Pauline. She passed away a couple of years ago and his grandpa, Earl. And then this is his dad, Terry, who also passed away a couple of years ago. I'm going to start crying too. Great. <laughs> and so we have, um, we have this little, isn't this cute? It's a little milk lamp top, but um, we have this little memorial table in the corner and every night it's plugged into a timer and the light kicks on every night and it stays on. And I walk by every night and he does. Give them the kisses. He gives them the kisses. But um, cute little things, right? But then we also bought a cool record cabinet that's over here. Oh, gosh. I need to give you guys a real tour. This is my Lamp of a Thousand Eyes. Have you guys ever seen these? This is depression glass. I, don't, I wasn't even planning on walking out here, but you know. So this is my Lamp of a Thousand Eyes. I probably should turn it on. This depression glass, it actually glows. But isn't it beautiful? Anyways, welcome to our living room. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I have a lamp problem. I love lamps. Like, oh, and then I never show you guys my artwork. Um, these are some of my personal paintings. I never show you guys my stuff. Oh. We have a million pieces. These are all my paintings as well. So, yeah, welcome. But can, you, can, you, can you just show them the one, my favorite? Okay, let me show you Sean's favorite. I'm backing up, I'm backing up. I'm trying not to, hold on. Okay, this is Sean's favorite. It's pumpkins. Yeah, it's not because I love pumpkins. It's, well, I mean, I do, but... That's just amazing. He loves that one. I think my favorite yeah. is, so this was our goat. That's gonna be the we goat used to have goats. And the barn's probably pretty close, right? That's Quail Hollow. Um, a friend of mine has a, a, a barn called Quail Hollow. And so we painted those. But this was our goats. We had baby goat. We had, we had goats we raised. And so we, um, this one was, that was Olive. We had Hazel and Olive. We picked old lady names because it was awesome. So we had Hazel and Olive <laughs> for a couple of years, and then they had babies. And then this one, my my one of my kids made us a ceramic tile of one of the babies. I can't remember, was her baby or Hazel's? I don't we remember. We had goat babies, and we decided to keep Juniper was her name. We called her Junie. So my um, one of my kids made that for me. But those are our cute. I love that one, too. He's He's happy. Anyways, I probably should paint more. I really should. I agree. You're your own worst critic, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, off to, uh, what am I doing? What was the point of this whole thing? Tomatoes. Oh, my husband's picking a record, though. That was the whole point oh, of it. I'm oh, and I know you guys love my mason jar collection. These are all blue mason jars. Oh, let me get out of the way. No, you're Sorry. okay. We had this shelf when we moved in, and I thought, well, what am I going to put up there? And we have a giant mason bar. Mason bar? Mason bar. <laughs> mason jar collection <laughs> that just happened to fit perfectly. So every time we travel, we pick up a blue mason jar, and um, we don't use them for cooking and stuff like that, but they sure are pretty. Am I right? I love blue mason jars. Anyways, oh, I did the hutch reveal, by the way, and look what ended up back over here. Junk, like I told you. I said it would be organized in front of the junk. So, okay, we're back. Okay. Moving on. Back to real life. Okay, back to tomatoes. I set a timer. We have 55 minutes. We'll do another check-in. Bye. Okay, it's been another hour. Let's see where we are. You ready? All right, this is looking perfect. Okay, do you see? They do look like pepperoni. Is this the weirdest thing? They are now completely dry. You can tell because they puffed way right up. Yeah, that's it, you guys. It's like very airy. There's no wet spots. They don't feel like I have any. All right. That's it. I am going to turn my oven off. I'm gonna set these just to the side and let them cool down for the night. I'm done, you guys. I was in the kitchen today for 
I don't know, like 12 hours. <laughs> Doing picante and peaches and now this. So I'm done, you guys. I already washed my face. And my husband and I are going to go sit down and watch. Have you seen Only Murders in the Building? We just started that one. So um, there we are. But I will finish this tomorrow. What I'm going to do is grind it up. I don't know if I'm going to use a food processor yet or a spice grinder. i got to figure that out. Sometimes the magic bullet even works. But um, I'll mess with that tomorrow and I'll bring you back for the next step. But for now, just let it cool down until it's room temp. <laughs> Good morning. It's bright and early the next morning. It's actually, I got up early this morning to get a bunch of stuff done. So it's actually just after eight o'clock in the morning. Our um, tomato skins sat just on the stovetop all night. They're very airy. They're very light. Um, I found the easiest way to do this is with a coffee grinder. Um, I just have one that I got at a thrift store. I, honestly, I think I paid two bucks for them. I see them in thrift stores a lot. Um, if you use one for your coffee, you can just throw a piece of bread in there, like just a couple of crumbles of bread. Give it a spin and that will clean out your coffee grounds. Same when you're done with the tomatoes, you would just do the same thing. Throw some bread in there, give it a whirl, clean that out so that you can go back to consuming your coffee. But uh, the easiest way to do this, I just grab like a little handful of them, I kind of squish them up and then shove them in there. It's pretty easy. Don't overwhelm it, but it um, remember they're really airy, so they're going to break down really quick. Then all you do, give it a pulse. Um, I find that I sometimes have to give it a shake to get it going. And then, um, the more you pulse it and let it spin, the farther down it's going to break. What? <laughs> so I just give it a little shake to get it all incorporated. That's what I mean. Until you like the consistency. So like, I want a little more than that. I did try my magic bullet. I tried my um, food processor as well. And they don't just, they don't work as well as a coffee grinder. So see, it powders it right up. So I have a little container that I'm throwing this into so that I can make our chicken bouillon out of it. So I'm just gonna keep processing my tomatoes. Same thing, just grab a handful of them, shove them in there. It'll take me probably for one tray, which was uh, about 18 tomatoes, I wanna say. For one tray, it's gonna take me like five loads. That's not bad. Back at it, back to the grind. <laughs> okay, I'll bring you back once I get them all processed and I'll show you how I turn this into tomato bouillon. All right, be right back. Okay, I moved you guys back to our island and I wanna show you, now that we have our tomato, uh, basically like tomato powder. It's a little bit flakier because we used the oven or dehydrator versus a freeze dryer. So it's not gonna get the perfect powdery consistency because it's just not processed the same. And, but it still gives a good flavor, so we're good. I got four tablespoons of it um, overall for all those tomatoes. This is the product that we um, are trying to replicate. We are replicating this. Uh, this is the caldo de tomato. Just kidding. I can't say it. it's tomato bouillon with chicken flavor. Um, and it's very, very high in sodium, which that's fine, but I wanted to figure out a cleaner way to make this. That's, that's basically what we're getting to. So I have a little container. I'm going to put our four tablespoons of tomato back in there. I wanted to measure them to see how much we had. Um, I did a taste test. I put a little bit of the original version of this into our thing just to see where we end up. I have a half a cup of the, this is the chicken bouillon that we made. Um, it's actually like a vegan chicken bouillon. So that is what that one is. Uh, the recipes on the channel, I will do my best to link it. I'm just going to give this a shake to get it all incorporated. Now, one of the other tricks that I found, and this is optional, you guys, if you don't want to run out and buy ingredients, if that is what you want, that's your finished product. Um, now we have a chicken tomato bouillon. It's just a really beautiful little powder, has some red flakes in it, good to go. I found, so my husband uses Achiote powder. It's a powdered um, stuff. This stuff is like, seriously, it's like a dollar for this pack and it'll last you the rest of your life. I'm not joking. It has a bunch of these little packets in it and no recipe. <laughs> he had to come in here and give his input. Okay. Oh, okay. I warned you guys when we started this video, it's like eight o'clock in the morning. And my husband has been up since 3.30 working, and <laughs> you can come over here. Okay. <laughs> we do it real on this channel. We're real, right? We do it real, so I'm today... I'm going to put pajamas all the time. Sweatshirt. 
Uh, my beard's not, I haven't taken a shower, I saw my glasses. He's been working on. all morning. It's fine. Hmm? So that's what it is. This is normal life, people. This I is real. I can't believe you're already giving away my antioxidant powder. You didn't make it from scratch. Well, I didn't I, make it from scratch. And I didn't scratch, tell him what you use but, it for. Okay. That'll be a whole other thing. But if you want his pollo asado recipe, let us know. Yeah, we um, grew up in California, Southern California, and there is a place called Carenas. It's a like a Mexican meat market, uh, a carniceria, right? Yeah, it's but, a I full mean, grocery store. It's yeah, a full grocery it store. Has, it's a great carniceria. But there, if you live in Southern California, you should hit one. They have the best pollo asado, carne asada, that type of stuff that's pre-made. Well, we can't get it here. We, the, it sucks in the South. We'll just say that. Um, if you find it, it's just not great. And so we, he... Started making his own pollo asado, which is what the achiote is for, and carne asado, which is like killer. So it's nice because it's one big piece of meat instead of all these little chopped up pieces too. So. And it's funny now in the south, carne asada people don't even know what it is. Yeah. And that's weird to me. It's but you guys tell me what you guys. It's think. getting better the more and transplants do have, move here. Do you have but... pollo asado and carne asado where you are? Yeah. Interested Let know. us know in Canada and um, the UK and South Africa, and I bet they don't, but let us know. What meats do you guys have? Okay, so when I, this is like gone in a rant, here you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so when I was younger, I decided I was going to, in my lifetime, learn how to make a dish or like the, the most famous dish from every country. I thought that would be fun. I haven't gotten very many under my belt yet, though. So if you have a very famous dish from the country you live, let me know. Yeah, we haven't done blood sausage yet. So no, we made um, a friend of ours. A friend of ours was from Poland, and we were like, okay, we're gonna make um, pierogies, pierogies. (laughs) And so she gave me a cookbook, and it was in Polish, y'all. So that was helpful. So she had to come over and help me, but that was a long time ago. Anyways, achiote is—I don't even know what's in it actually, because it's in Spanish. and my eyes are not that big. Well, my eyes are big. My eyes don't work that. Can you come read this? Just kidding. <laughs> it's literally in Spanish. It's garlic, cumin, a caking agent. It's got coriander, annatto. Oh, yeah, I can't read that. God, that's real small. Ready? Oh, wait, it's in English on this side. Sometimes I have to put my reading glasses no, over my regular glasses just to see things. So, <laughs> But um, achiote is a beautiful red. Well, what can I put it on? I'll put it on the lid. It's this beautiful, like, orangey red powder, and it's really, really tasty. So into our mix, I'm going to add a half of one of the packets that comes in here. It just enhances the flavor of it. Like I said, it's optional. If you can't find um, Achiote, this is from Walmart. I, th- I really think it's, like, less than a dollar for the packet. I think it's 98 cents. And like I said, it will last forever. Plus, you'll need it for our carne asada. No, our pollo asada recipe that we're going to show you. <laughs> All right, I'm just giving it a shake. Shake, 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 Sonora. Sonora. Who's ready for Beetlejuice 2? Let's just say. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Okay. Oh, oh, we just said it three times. No, I said it twice. Oh, I know. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm going to put a little of this in to this container so that I can do a taste test, you guys. So the way that I taste test things, just to, okay, so you guys know that in order to make dupes, I often look at the ingredients on the back, except that this one, I did not put chicken fat in it um, or caramel color or uh, half the stuff that I can't read. Yellow number this and yellow. I didn't put all that in it. So we're going to see how close we got doing a finger test. This is the original. This is our new recipe. I should have mixed it in water. That'd probably be better, huh? Do you want to taste test with me? I'll taste test with you. I'm just doing a finger test, though. Okay. All right. So try the original first. This is the original? This is the original. I think it has sugar in it. Sweet. Salty. I've had that before. Yep. By itself, it's quite pungent. Mm Mm-hmm. Ours is definitely savorier. Savorier? More savory. It's not sugar. Those are very, very... Very similar. similar. Mm-hmm. The only difference, this must have sugar in it. It's very sweet. Do you get the sweet? Yeah, well, sugar. I, get, I get salty out of it. Sugar and palm oil. We don't have those But, either. I mean, that makes sense because we're, we're eating it direct. Right, I mean. When it's in a recipe, then the yeah. salt's not as big of a deal. But... No. It's good, though, yeah? Mm. 
Yeah, it's very, he's very my, good. Yes. He's my taste tester. Anyways, that is our recipe. I will put it below as well. But basically what we had is four tablespoons of our dehydrated tomato peels, half of a cup of our chicken bouillon that I will link the recipe below. And then if you want to add some of the, this is what it, this package is old, you guys don't judge. It's achiote, it's, um, it's actually cilantro and, achi and, and annatto is what this is, which this does, by the way, have annatto in it. So that's our recipe. I am working on a beef broth recipe or a beef bouillon recipe. A million of you guys asked for it. That's a hard one because I don't have dehydrated beef or freeze dried beef to make it with. Um, I did get in contact with a local farm source to get some good quality beef. So I might be able to work that out, but um, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Maybe down the road it'll be here, but not quite yet. Anyways, that is our tomato, tomato and chicken bouillon. And we love to make Mexican rice with this. That's what we usually do with it. So I'm going to stick this in our cabinet. And uh, there you guys go. Much cleaner, much better ingredients, which is cleaner. And um, you know what's in it. Plus, you used all your tomato. We had one very small handful of, full of cores or tops from our tomatoes. Everything else got used. How cool is that, right? Anyways, off we go. Next recipe. Hope you have a grand, grand day, y'all. Okay. Go enjoy life. Thanks.